Hey everyone, it's a Skateboard Dad, and today I am doing a review on the Vans MTE2 Skate High. This is the black and white colorway. It's just a classic looking Vans shoe with an added rubber toe cap. Also some extra grip on the bottom. And we'll get into some other parts of the shoe as well. Can you see my breath on camera? Spooky. So if you're new to my channel, I'm a Skateboard Dad and I just do like skateboarding content and stuff like that. And make sure to like the video if you like it because it like helps with YouTube stuff. So the main differences between the MTE Vans Skate High and just the regular Vans Skate High is that they are water resistant. They have this extra added grip, the lugs on the outsole of the shoe and there is a layer of insulation in the shoe. It came with a bunch of these little tags explaining some of the tech, which I'll go through. There's a heat retention layer between the outsole and the sock liner. It says that this model sort of retains most of your heat around the toe of your shoe, which I can confirm is pretty true. And it says that it maintains moisture management around your toe, which might be true. It's got a Primaloft insulation system. It says that some of the features of Primaloft is warmth without bulk, which I can confirm is true. It's water resistant, which I can confirm is true. It's breathable. It's somewhat breathable, I suppose, sort of true. It's lightweight. Yeah, I'd say it's lightweight and it's durable. I'll get into that in a little bit. There is this eco dry technology. It's eco-friendly water repellent. So that's also cool. Vans being eco-friendly, that's nice. It's kind of cool to think that Vans cares about the environment a little bit. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it's marketed that way. So maybe I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt in this video. And we'll get into all of those points later on in the video, that being the water resistance, the insulation, and then the durability and grip of the outsole. Now the differences between the MTE2 line from Vans and then also the MTE1 and the MTE3. The MTE2 is better insulated than the MTE1 and then has this rubber toe cap and uh, some, some different grip as well. And then the MTE3 is even more so insulated than this and the one. I'm just gonna hold one of them. It's kind of redundant to hold two. I'm just gonna file that one under F for floor. My experience with these shoes is one, that they're extremely comfortable. So they have this Vans Ultra Cush insole, which I've had Ultra Cush HD before, and I've also had things called Pop Cush as well. And I actually prefer this insole. It's fairly squishy, but it's got a, a bit more support than like the regular Comfy Cush would. It's not too thick like the, the new Pop Cush where it, it adds so much arch support so that if you have flat feet like me, it sort of throws your foot off balance. So this Ultra Cush insole I think works really well with this shoe and it's a pretty universal fit insole. When you walk around in these, it's like they're like two teddy bears like hugging your foot with each step. But they want to do it though. They don't mind. Glad we cleared that up. Really, really, really comfortable shoe. Also, they are super warm. The insulation, whatever it is, it works well. I can't really wear wool socks with them, or at least thick wool socks. I've found that when I've been more active wearing these outside and wearing thick wool socks like I typically would with a sneaker in the winter, my feet sort of overheat. So I've been pairing these with like a kind of thinner merino wool sock. It's a more breathable material and it's not intensely warm. And I've even worn these with like Nike dry fit socks, which are just like a typical cotton blend sock. My feet have never been cold in these. So definitely a plus on comfort and warmth. One thing that I think is overlooked with a lot of high top shoes is either how easy or hard it is to put them on. My favorite shoe of all time is the Nike SB Blazer Mid, which is a little bit shorter than this. They're like nearly impossible to take off and put on. With this, with these pull tabs and this sort of faux like shoehorn pull tab thing, they're basically slip-ons that you just tighten up afterwards. Like these are so easy to put on and take off. That's definitely a plus. It's made it so that I don't even wear my blazers anymore. And I've actually even worn these to the store without lacing them on. I just slip them on, go to the store real quick, come back, slip them off, and it's worked out great. They fit really well, they slip on really well, which is overlooked, and I think it's a good quality in a shoe. So I initially bought these so I could do this activity called snow skating. So I wanted something that sort of mimicked the function of a skate shoe 
but was water resistant and then also had grip, like good grip for ice and snow. The shoe definitely lived up to what I wanted it to do, which was to keep my feet warm, to keep my feet dry, and then to give me grip. It does all of those things really, really well. The only thing that really worries me about the shoe is that it's vulcanized. So that's when they just take a piece of rubber for the outsole and then sort of put this foxing tape or this rubber around it. And so it's a two piece construction for an outsole. And for a shoe that's like $130, I am not that pumped that that is the technology in this shoe. With a cup sole, it's typically a better construction, less can go wrong, there are less seams for there to be water to leak through. And I've also had Vans shoes in the past with vulcanized midsoles and sole combinations start to peel back here where the foxing tape overlaps. So I hope that that doesn't happen with these, but if it does, Whatever, every shoe has a downside, but the shoe doesn't have that many. Honestly, the construction of these is pretty good, um, but I don't think it's really in that buy it for life category of purchases. Now, are they worth the retail price of $130? I actually got mine brand new in box on eBay for $50. So they're definitely worth $50. Honestly, if I were in the market for a winterized sneaker that was above $100, my first thought wouldn't be I'm gonna go run out and buy a pair of Vans. But after wearing these for a few weeks, I think that uh, my perspective has changed on them. Like I honestly think that this shoe is worth $100 or more. I think the quality is there in the weather resistance, in the grip and in the insulation where it makes this shoe worth around the $100 mark, which you can typically find them on sale for around $100. And if you really like them and if you can't afford a $130 sneaker, then I think it is worth it. I honestly do. Especially because a lot of sneakers reach that price point without even having the same amount of function as this shoe. It's not a boot though. It's good for like maybe shoveling the driveway or like going sledding or a snowball fight or just whatever, just like a leisurely, winter activity shoe. But this isn't going to be like the shoe that you're going on hikes with or doing like real winter activities. These definitely will not replace your snow boots. I, I think this is my favorite shoe I've had for a winter season. So my final thoughts on this shoe, I think they're a great water resistant shoe that keeps you warm, dry, and keeps you stable with all the grip. I think that it's worth the money and I think that it looks good. I think it's just a good looking shoe. If you like the style and you're looking for a shoe, kind of a no brainer, it's a good shoe. Especially if you can find it on sale. You, can, you usually can find them around like a hundred bucks or so. Skateboard Dad, subscribe. Thanks for watching.